the Fortnite <laughs> do the do our justice. <laughs> What's up, peoples? Insert joke about me not uploading for a month here. And welcome to How to Phasmophobia. This game took the world by storm. It's getting really high views on Twitch, and it's just such a fun game. Let's start with the items. All right, this item list is going to be a speed run because as you can see, there is quite a lot of items. So let's get this done fast. First, we're gonna start with all of the items that can give you evidence. First, the EMF reader. The EMF reader, you pretty much turn it on and it beeps if there's ghost activity nearby. If it gets all the way to EMF level five, that's evidence that you can put into your journal by clicking J. Next up for evidence is the UV light. Pretty much, you can look around with this flashlight that's purple, <laughs> that's what a UV light is, and you'll find fingerprints on doors, windows, light switches, etc. anything that a ghost can really touch, and if you find those fingerprints, you can put them down as evidence. Next up, you have the video camera. You can place this video camera in a room. If you watch the video camera at the van and you see this little green orb zooming around the room, you will know that that is Ghost Orb and you put Ghost Orb down as evidence. Next is the spirit box. The spirit box. The spirit box. 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 Pretty much, you place it down, you turn it on, and if you hear a robotic voice speak to you, which it will be the spirit box, that's the ghost talking to you, that counts as evidence, put it down as spirit box, that's that. Hey. Next is freezing temperatures. You can find this out one of two ways. You can find it with a thermometer, it being below zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Or you can just look for your breath. You'll see your breath if it is freezing temperatures. Then you just write that down in your journal as, well, freezing temperatures. Then finally, there is ghostwriting. Pretty much you put down this ghostwriting book and everyone calls it a journal. It, it's it's what it's called, just call it a journal. And the ghost can write in this. If it does, that's ghost writing as evidence, and that is the final piece of evidence. Oh yeah, ghost writing, I didn't know that. Next, we have all the items that can give you challenges. First up, we have the photo camera. A common challenge is to take a picture of dirty water in a sink. Pretty much, you just yell at the ghost to turn on the sink, and if it turns on the sink, the water will be dirty. The problem is this only happens like one in four times, so don't really worry about the challenge too much. Another one is to take a picture of the ghost. Come upstairs, bro. Come upstairs, bro. <gasps> Why are you running? I got a picture, Why I think. Are you running? I got it. Before we move on in the video, I'm gonna explain what this was. This is called a hunt. Pretty much, if your lights start flickering, a hunt will trigger and the ghost is trying to kill you. As you can see, you can outrun the ghost, but there are two ghosts you can not outrun, which are the Jinn and the Revenant. These ghosts are very scary to combat, especially in a map like Asylum or High School. But this, well, this was a demon and we absolutely clapped it. We just ran away and we got away. To prevent hunts, you can put crucifixes on the ground or you can also simply take sanity pills because taking pills are extremely important. Also, remember that in amateur runs, there's a five minute timer before it can even start hunting. In intermediate runs, two minute timer. In professional runs, it can hunt at any time. But I don't think I've ever had a game where I've walked in and it hunted right away. Anyway, back to the challenges. There's a bunch of things you can do with the photo camera. Other than that, you can take pictures of bones, take pictures of voodoo doll, you can take pictures of footprints, and you'll get money from that. So the photo camera is extremely helpful. Another thing that gives you challenges is the lighter, but you have to combo it with the smudge stick. If you use these two things together, you can light a smudge stick and you'll have to smudge stick the room of the event. I would say this is one of the easiest challenges in the game because you pretty much just pull out the smudge stick and you have the lighter, you click F, and you go into the room and you've smudged it successfully. Then you have the crucifix. You're gonna need to prevent a hunt with the crucifix. You've gotta find out where the ghost spawns when it hunts. That's the easiest way to do it. And then once you know where it spawns, you throw the crucifix on the ground and the crucifix can prevent it from hunting in a three meter range for most ghosts. 
a five meter range for Banshee, meaning that you're gonna wanna, if you know if it's a Banshee, just throw the crucifixes in the general direction where you think they're spawning. You don't have to be as specific. And it broke the other crucifix. All right, let's call it. <laughs> Getting a ghost to walk through salt. Pretty much, you pour the salt down in pretty much, I usually put it in doorways and things, and usually it's pretty easy to get it to step through salt. Pretty simple. The motion sensor also has a challenge, which is to have the ghost pass through this motion sensor. It's pretty simple. It's similar to the salt, you just place it on a doorway. Usually it'll just walk by it just randomly and you'll be like, oh, well, I got that challenge done. Witnessing a ghost event usually just kind of happens. A lot of the time you'll just get it from you witnessing something getting thrown or a door being opened. But sometimes it's just not working. And if this is happening, I've done some research and the easiest way to truly do it is to place down some salt, put down a glow stick next to it, try to get it to get footprints or something, and usually that counts as a ghost event. All right, those are all the optional objectives. Remember, these are huge for making money. I did not include the one with the EMF and the thermometer because I already talked about those earlier. And the EMF and the thermometer ones are really easy to do. By the way, if there are any other challenges currently, let me know in the comments because as I'm recording this, those are all the challenges. I know we've spent a lot of time on items, but this is the final stretch, so bear with me here. This is going to be a speed run of all the rest of the items I didn't mention via the challenges or the evidence. All right, we got the flashlight and the strong flashlight. The normal flashlight, well, it's a flashlight and same with the strong flashlight. The strong flashlight is just a better version. Remember that you can click T while having other items out to have your beamer going in the middle of your screen. So you don't have to have your flashlight out at all times. Then you've got the candle. You can light this with a lighter and it pretty much is just a light source against someone like a mare where if it flips the breaker, it's gonna attack more because it hunts more in the dark. So you're gonna wanna place these down to prevent it from hunting more in the dark. That's really all the candles are used for, in my opinion. They can be a decent light producer, but other than that, they're kind of niche. The glow stick, it's similar to a UV light, except you can just throw it by a door. It's, it's all right. It's a good light source as well. I like using them. You can find footprints really easily with this just by throwing it in the middle of the room for money, so that's good. Other than that, that's about it. Then you got the head mounted camera. These things are awesome. You can equip them at the start of the match in the van, and people can watch you your head mounted camera from inside the van similar to a video camera and find ghost orbs and things like that there it's a really cool addition i love this item then the infrared light sensor this is a scuffed motion sensor truly <laughs> that's all it is it, it's just a normal motion sensor but it doesn't make a noise in the van it doesn't give challenges i don't think there's a true use to it not that i've seen then you've got the parabolic microphone you can see audio through walls with this meaning it's actually pretty good on high school and asylum but on other maps it's not not that great because you can just find where the room is with the thermometer or an emf reader but this thing can be pretty nice then you got the sandy pills these things are so important remember to bring them every match because if your sanity is at zero you can walk there in there with a person whose sanity is 100 and you can cause the ghost to hunt just because you're in that room even though your friend's sanity is at 100 it can still go for your friend all right moving on to the sound sensor this is kind of similar to the this is kind of similar to the parabolic microphone in a way, except it's really for detecting hallway ghosts or if you don't know what exact room it's in on something like Asylum or High School. This is kind of nice, but it's not really a must have. It's okay. The tripod, this is a must have, in my opinion. Bring as many of these as you have video cameras because, well, it's just really nice. Being able to just plop it down wherever you want so you can look for ghosts are way easier. It's a very good addition and I love that. So make sure to bring tripods as well. Whew. Now we're done with the items, hallelujah. Now let's move on to the maps. Before we get into anything really important about the maps and the layout of them, we're first gonna talk about the breaker. The breaker is what controls the power on the entire map. And on the smaller maps, this is super important because a lot of the times you'll wanna keep certain lights on and things. And against a ghost like a mare that, well, I've already said, it attacks more in the dark, you're gonna want the lights on. However, on bigger maps, sometimes the breaker is a pain to find, so don't worry too much about it. But I'm gonna go over some of the breaker locations during this map section. First, we're 
gonna start with Tanglewood. This is the easiest of all the maps because it's really small. There's just a main floor and a basement. And I really like this map on professional runs because it's just a really good time because it's super fast and super easy. The breakers can spawn in either the garage or the basement. That's the only spots I've found. Let me know if you found others in the comments. But really, other than that, it's just a simple, good map. Next up, we've got the street houses slash road houses. These, so there's a basement, a main floor, and a second floor. The breaker, I've only found spawn in the garage and the basement similar to Tanglewood. This is another really fun one where you can bring a couple of friends and just have a good time on like a professional run. There are also multiple variants of both the roadhouse and the street house. So keep that in mind. It's not gonna be similar like Tanglewood. Other than that, there's not really that much to talk about. Next up is the farmhouse. This is similar to the roadhouse slash street house where it has multiple variations. It's pretty easy and it's just a good time. I think it's way cooler than the street house or roadhouse though because it's more of a cabin feel making it a bit more spoopy but otherwise it's a pretty simple map the breaker locations on this one i found it under the stairs in the attic and in multiple different rooms it's kind of random on this one you can just search around though since the map's fairly small next we're moving on to high school high school is the first map with genuine difficulty i feel like the main difficulty of these bigger maps like asylum and high school are that you need to find the ghost before your sanity drops so low that you can't walk into the ghost room without it hunting right away and you pretty much waste sanity pills from that but that rarely happens on high school since most of the rooms have phones you'll hear the phone ringing but if it is a hallway ghost it can be a pain the main breakers i've seen on this map are on the front two staircases it can be under the staircase and once i found it in a science room but i weren't worry about the breaker too much i would say just put candles in the room or glow sticks in the room if you're struggling with light because the ghost turned the breaker off this map is really fun but at the same time i wouldn't want to only play high school or even asylum over and over because it kind of gets boring because a lot of the times you're just walking around a map all right finally we have asylum this is the mother load of a map it is humongous it is the hardest map by far and i think it's like double the size of high school it's insane so there's a main floor with tons and tons of room and then there's a basement with tons and tons of rooms and this map is very very annoying sometimes because sometimes it will take you a half hour just to find the ghost because it's in some random hallway and oh it's just frustrating sometimes but this map can be extremely fun. Since it can be frustrating though, I usually limit myself to one or two asylum runs a day because otherwise I would probably go insane because sometimes you'll walk out and find the ghost on your third room and sometimes it'll be the last door you open and you'll finally find the ghost. But other than that, Asylum's just a really fun map and a really good addition. It's kind of the face of this game. Extremely fun, but sometimes infuriating. The breaker locations on this map, I have no clue. I think I've seen it once or twice, but I seriously can't remember because I've never really cared if the breaker was off. Just bring candles. There is beta testing out for the new map Prison, but I haven't tried it out yet because I don't really want to go on the beta. But when it comes out officially, I'll definitely cover it probably in a separate mini video. But otherwise, that's all of the maps. We're already 13 minutes into this video and we still haven't talked about the ghost yet. That's how crazy complicated this game can be and people don't even realize it. Before we talk about the ghost interaction and stuff like that, first we're gonna talk about the two places that ghosts can spawn, which are rooms and hallways. Let's start with hallway ghosts. In my opinion, this is the more difficult of the two ghosts because it's a bit harder to track down. Sometimes the hallway can stretch for a really long time while most rooms are pretty small in comparison. It's not like the worst thing in the world because normally you can pin down the exact area of the ghost via like freezing temperatures or a ghost orb or something like that because then you'll know where other stuff is. Sometimes it can be a pain in the butt. Just look at this clip on Asylum. Oh, it's both hallways, another hallway. Yay! Yay! Six degrees. Grabbing another trip. Yeah, that game wasn't fun. Anyway, now let's move on to the room ghosts. Room ghosts, well, they, uh... You know, I'm just gonna let my friend take over for this section. So, what are your thoughts on hallway ghosts versus room ghosts? Hallway ghosts versus room ghosts, huh? Uh, room ghosts are nice. They probably, you know... 
They just chill out. They're in a room. They might want to kill you, but I mean, they're nice. But hallway <laughs> ghost is a different story, okay? Mm. These guys will not only kill you, not only break orphans' dreams, but listen to this slander. Okay. They actually like the movie Troll. <laughs> Next up, we're gonna move on to the types of ghosts which are the spirit, the wraith, phantom, the poltergeist, the banshee, the djinn, the mare, the revenant, the shade, the demon, the yuri, and the oni. Here's the thing, I'm not gonna go over what all these ghosts do. First of all, because I don't want this video to be 20 minutes long. And second of all, because it kind of breaks the immersion of the game. One of the best parts of this game is figuring out the weaknesses of a ghost and using that to your advantage to do well during that run. That's all I'm gonna talk about when it comes to ghosts. I'll just name them, because I'm lazy. Now we've got the last thing we're gonna be talking about, which is interaction with the ghosts. Ghost interaction is one of the main parts of this game and we still haven't covered it yet. And honestly, it's pretty simple. You can say stuff because there's constant proximity chat and the ghost understands a few questions such as give us a sign which can make it open doors turn on a phone do stuff like that so you know where the ghost is that's why you hear people saying give me a sign give me a sign give me a sign over and over again or you can say something like what's your name and it may reply via spirit box or ouija board where are you is another question you can ask for ouija board there's countless things and i recommend that you look up all this but other than that when you're not asking it questions it can just open doors it can turn on lights it can do everything a human can do but faster because it can just pretty much turn off breaker at any time even if it's completely across the map which makes no sense but I accept it anyway. It flickers lights constantly, and there's so many things that the ghost can do that I'm not gonna cover every single interaction point in this video. Because again, I don't wanna break your immersion, and I think that's why I left the ghost for last. Because I think that the other stuff is informational. This is more what you'll learn as you play more. Now, you're officially ready to go ghost hunting. I mean, it was a long journey, and this is my longest video I've made yet, so I spent a lot of time on it. All of the clips in this video were done live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash llspiral. Please go check out my Twitch if you enjoy this video, because I'm sure you'll enjoy my streams there. I stream every day from 2 to 5 central time. Anyway, let's move on to the final skit of the video. Do you have a ghost in your home? Hi, my name is yui.png and I am the founder of Ghost Dusters. Here at Ghost Dusters, we try our absolute hardest to clean your ghosts the way you want us to. I know that ghosts are scary, and they can be very intimidating at times, but Ghost Dusters is here to give them the cleaning they really need. Just look at this interview with this completely real customer that I didn't just get off the street. How is Ghost Dusters treating you? Okay, here, it's a long story. So I first had this like five foot ghost, like five foot three, really short. Okay, so it was like, I have, it's a like, oh, sh don't. Get on to the part where Ghost Dusters is really good. Oh, really? Okay. Get on to okay. it. Okay. So Get on to it or you're not getting your listen, payment. Listen. Okay, listen, listen, listen. So the Ghost Duster, I put it in the living room. And it immediately sucked up the ghost. It did in it in an instant, bruh. Okay, um, one of you. The the product is actually that we have a team that comes in and cleans your ghost. Um, oh. Let's just yeah. That's that's the interview. <laughs> As you can see by this next interview, we are extremely professional here. Okay, so where's my money? Um, what money, sir? The ad said I got money. Where is it? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about, sir. Give me my money! Do you have any evidence of that, sir? Yeah, because it said in the ad, give me my money! As you can see, our cleaning process is very good, and it's totally not us putting a duster in post with a stock image of a ghost. As you can see, we really get into those cracks, and then we dispose of the duster to where we don't know where. Okay, as you can see, you should definitely call up the Ghost Dusters today at 1-800-YOUR-MOM. I repeat, that is 1-800-U-R-M-O-M. Twitch.tv slash LLSpiral. Alright, bye.